All right, hey everybody, it's Nick Canfo from Tropic Flare. Uh, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an insight into how the self-hosting goes with AppSmith and what it's like to actually build in AppSmith before you get set up with your self-hosting. Um, so I'm using this as a way to explain in addition to my article um, how things go. Um, so the first thing you do when you get set up with self-hosting, oh, some guy almost vomited. Uh, the first thing you do with self-hosting is you go purchase a server somewhere on the internet. I purchased mine with DigitalOcean because I built other uh, self-hosting apps on DigitalOcean. So you go push their Docker instance for AppSmith self-hosting to your, your server, and then you can start configuring it with a console. That itself is actually pretty difficult because a lot of the things that you would think of a open source you know, self-hosted version of an app, uh, the features that there would be there, it's not. You have to do a lot of the configurations with the console through like a .env file. It's a pain in the butt. So it's not as simple as just like installing something like an N8N, for example, where you install it from their Docker and then you get pretty decent access for how stuff goes. Um, with AppSmith's self-hosted version, you can see here that really for my admin panel, for example, um, there's not really like everything like you would think that you would have for like a self-hosted app is kind of hidden behind their business stuff. Um, you know, session timeouts, right? Uh, allow embedding anywhere. Thank God you can actually embed apps. So, but you're gonna have like a little bit of a watermark on your embedded applications. So if you wanted to build this as like a professional, you know, version for something, you're gonna have to let your users know that it's built with apps, right? Not the end of the world, but kind of a thing. Holy crap. Um, getting your email configured for this is a pain. Also getting your SSL and authentication set up is a pain uh, with self-hosting. So it's, I do not, wish that on anyone it's really quite a pain to get this set up um, in addition like your branding and everything like that is all hidden behind a business this is this thing so you're gonna have to upgrade for that which is on their business plan and then their business plan is like 40 bucks a month so at that point you're like well what's the What's the point of doing self-hosting if I'm just to just do this on their business plan, right? So uh, it's just, it seems like they've used this as a way to basically get people into um, having something being self-hosted and eventually moving them over to the business plan later. So it's not just something that you can just use for free just with the cost of your, um, uh, your server or wherever. For DigitalOcean, it costs you 24 bucks a month minimum because you do need like four gigabytes of RAM to be setting this up. So it's not just like, it's not free. You have to pay for that as well. Um, with all of that, what is the admin experience like? So if you want to, a real pain in the butt here with AppSmith is that if you want to be sharing your, you know, if you want to, well, first of all, it comes default out of the box. Here's a big caveat. It comes default out of the box as allowing any user that gets to your domain um, to be able to sign up for AppSmith and start building apps. What? Why would that be the default setting for your instance? Um, so to change that, you have to go into the ENV file, you have to configure stuff, not allow people to just, to allow any Joe Schmo to create a, user accounts stop reading and building apps because you don't want all your users to start building apps. Um, and now you're thinking, okay, great. So I can hide my interface. This is the user interface for all users. They can see their workspaces over here. They can see the applications in those workspaces. So another thing is that if you want to share these apps with people, um, you can see here that there's only three roles an admin which can build workspaces apps um, a developer can edit and view applications and invite other people to the workspace and for an app viewer who can invite people to these applications and to view them 
So the lowest level actually has a thing where it's unnecessarily giving them access to like inviting other people. So in this case, it's not just like a thing where they get access to apps, but they can actually add other people. So it's not really good for a lot of use cases where you just want to build apps that uh, anybody can use. Also, it's more of an internal uh, developer case. Um, another big thing is that users can also see all of the other users inside of the space. Not the end of the world, but if you're building this as a place that you can build one app for many different, you know, companies or many different people or, you know, many different departments, and you might not want everyone else to see who's in the app, uh, tough luck because everyone's going to be able to see other people in the app. So that sucks. Um, what's the app building experience like? Well, let's take a look here. So we built a couple of just simple testing and stuff like that. Uh, my uncle's company, one of my clients, is uh, called uh, Park City Taxi. And <laughs> so there's some things like there's maps and stuff like that you can add in, uh, you know, navigation tools, tables. Um, you know, you can add in like a chat GPT functionality here where you can like build in this, you know, here we just, me and my friend, we wanted it to create a fairy tale for us for fun. Um, and, you know, there's a decent amount of stuff you can you can do with it. But the uh, overall interface, I think, is pretty clunky. A lot of times I want to, like, edit stuff and it takes a lot of time for me to figure out how to do it. It's not very um, intuitive on where things are hidden and uh, all those kinds of components. It takes a little bit of time to learn it. Another big thing is that you'll see that the data part back here is not on the same screen as your components. So for example, if you want to say, ah oh, man, I want to basically um, limit the people in my query or limit the rows in my query to what the row selection is here, right? You gotta go in here, you gotta start building your query, and then you gotta say, oh wait, what's the name of the table again? Okay, now I gotta come back here, I gotta find the table, which one is it, right? Oh, okay, now I wanna test it, so now I gotta, you know, if I wanna test it for the query, now I gotta come back in here, I gotta select the row, and then I gotta come back here, and then I gotta do it here. And it's just a pain in the butt. Um, I really wish that AppSmith would have something where you can see both your queries um, and your um, and your actual components all on the same thing, right? You just like all. That does have some helpful things in here. You, you know, you can you can it helps you see what tables are in here, and there's a schema thing. Um, so. It's not like horrible, but it is kind of a little bit of a pain to have to go back and forth between uh, both of them. Um, you know, so if you were to, so for example, what this means is like, you know, every user can see every other user in a workspace. The most limited number, the list, most limited user type can add people into your instance. So there's no user control about who gets access to it. So fucking security nightmare, right? And, um, yeah, so it's just like, if you're gonna have to use this uh, and limit and, and really tighten down the security level of your internal app, you're gonna have to buy the business plan. Hence, my opinion is that this AppSmith self-hosting version just on the free uh, community edition is just a, you know, it's a marketing trick to get you to buy the business plan. And then the business plan, you know, Oh, here's this, um, you get help for it, so. Um, and then the business plan comes up. And basically you're limited on 100 hours of usage um, for the app usage in a month, right? 
so at that point, it's like, why wouldn't you just go with a tool like Superflux or Retool or Buddy Base or other tools that are going to be um, better for your, you know, per user pricing, and also can do embeddable apps that don't have, um, you know, branding and stuff like that. Anyhow, so this whole thing of being free um, is not really, uh, not really free. So it's a little bit of a misnomer. And with all the limitations with users and with, you know, additions and this whole, you know, everything in the admin panel here is just like, just, um, you know, business plan. If you want to do specific user types, having specific types of permissions, business plan, right? It's just a, it's just a, I wouldn't say scam, but it's, it's a marketing tactic to get you to buy their business plan. Um, so if you're just looking, to, if you're thinking as a developer, developer I'm just going to self-host apps in this community edition and start building apps for some clients, not so fast, my friend. Um, there's going to be more limitations to you there. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of create a little video for you to see what I'm talking about in my, my article here. I hope this is helpful for all local developers out there that are looking to build with AppSmith. It's going to push you to the business plan and uh, you can't escape it. So hope this is helpful and build on my friends.